Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the Human Magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the Halfling Fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the Human Cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the Human Barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, the scouts of the Broken Tusk following found boot prints leading up a switchback trail to a cliff 80 feet above the plain below. There they met Ardissa Prendergant, a Taldor hunter in search of a mammoth to kill, stuff, and mount in her manor. With an impressive persuasion check, Andreas convinced her to do something very unlikely, give up a chance to take a mammoth from the Broken Tusks, and try to negotiate with the burning mammoths instead. Unfortunately, however, when Ardissa informed her dwarven guides, who were actually local poachers, of the change in plans, they immediately let her know that any negotiations with the burning mammoths were likely to end in death. Lady Prendergant and the poachers attacked the party, and despite a devastating fireball spell, the scouts were victorious. Ardissa Prendergant was knocked off the cliff by Corgo and disappeared in a cloud of dust and rock. Now the scouts stand on the side of the mountain, near the hunter's campsite. Strange clucking and hissing noises are coming from the area around the tents, where something is moving. What do you want to do? I want her spellbook, that's what I want. <laughs> Maybe it's still on uh, the cliff there. Given uh, what I've learned about this woman and her uh, previous encounters with mammoths, this hissing and clucking is leading me to believe that she may have a cockatrice. There are three dead dwarves on the ground here. Two of them next to you and one that you killed as he fled over to the camp. We already checked the bodies, right? I think you did, but they don't have anything on them aside from a cargo hook, which they were using as a weapon. Yeah, if they don't have any uh, valuable goods, cash, potions, etc. At least not here. You can see there's a camp over there. They have very little use for a cargo hook. Mm, I suppose I'll lead us in, unless anybody's really hurt. Um, well, Zankath isn't doing too good, and I've hurt my elbow. <laughs> well, you better take care of that elbow, Jones. We don't want that getting any worse. And unfortunately, I'm not feeling uh, very powerful at the moment. Maybe maybe me and uh, Zankath will just stay in the back. I, I feel like us staying up here is probably the best decision. Okay, so then uh, Andreas will head over to the camp. What is Corgo doing? Corgo is tending to Hrungar, because Hrungar almost died, so... Yep, Hrungara right. is pretty beat up right now. Is Hrungara conscious? Do we resolve that? I can't remember. His hit points are full, and he's wounded one. So I think we, I think that somebody did something. Oh yeah, I think I think Jonesy. Jonesy healed him. Healed him. Yeah, I think that's right. She just have to take unconscious and blind it off. <laughs> Can I try to do some first aid on me and Zankath? Yep, it'll take ten minutes, right? Per person, yeah. All right, so you begin healing who? You or Zancath? First Zancath. Let's see how it goes. That's a 12. That's a fail. 12 medicine was a fail. That's a critical success, though, a 25. So I feel really nice. good. Yeah. All right, so you are you begin treating them. However, you may, depending on what happens here, you know, don't don't assume that you have 20 uninterrupted minutes here oh. for treatment. Right. Uh, but in any case, Andreas begins walking down into the lower camp and he continues to hear this hissing sound. And as he moves down there, from around the corner of this tent emerges a creature that looks like this. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> well, you picked a gross one. <laughs> that's fine. Oh it's so ugly. This is why I can't use my critical success of healing. <laughs> yes, it is. Very Sheltered in a lower part of the ledge, this camp consists of two canvas tents, wooden crates, several collapsible cages, and a large cart. An exceptionally realistic statue of a large, cringing wolf stands near a stone foundation for a small structure. By the way, that is not on the map in any way, shape, or form. There is so. nothing on the map that suggests a stone foundation or a large wolf or anything like that. So, I, oh well. Just pretend it's there. From behind the tent, a creature emerges hissing and clucking. It's about five feet long 
and slightly over two feet high. It resembles a large chicken, but with a bat's wings and a snake-like tail. There is an emerald-studded silver collar around its neck that gleams in the last rays of the sun as it looks at you and crows harshly. Andreas, what do you do? Uh, I pull the other emerald-studded collar (laughs) out from my left pocket (laughs) and toss it at the cockatrice's feet. Okay. That's right. I killed your brother. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That could be interpreted in multiple ways. Uh, So you toss it at the creature's feet. The creature clucks at you and squawks and then sniffs the area. You think it's sniffing the area around this collar that you've thrown in the ground. Do you want to make some kind of skill check here or is there something you want to do uh, to if try I, to... Uh, my, if I was trained in deception, and that would be my diversion while I start casting spells. I can't remember how well we rolled to know cockatrice things when we encountered the body. I have written down it turns creatures to stone and uh, eats petrified flesh, so I assume we figured that much out at least. No, quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of wondering, because I, I mean, there's multiple creatures out there that I, that Sean knows turn things into stone, and I don't know if it's like a gaze or a breath weapon, so I want to know, like, how does it turn things into stone? How can I protect myself? You could give me an arcana check. I will do that. And I fail. That's an eight. Uh, you're pretty sure this thing has some kind of gaze attack. Okay. I'm really upset about that. <laughs> okay, Andreas will... <laughs> Uh, uh, he <laughs> starts pulling a bandana out of his bag. <laughs> He's going to tie it around his eyes. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Corgo and Andreas and Zankath, you hear this loud croak sound or uh, crowing noise, and you see this creature, as you look up, you see this creature has emerged from around the tent, and you see Andreas is putting on a blindfold. All right, so I just want to clear something up real quick here. I didn't get to heal myself with that critical success. N- no, you have not had 10 minutes yet. We'll carry it over when you do get to heal yourself. Jonesy's going to... I'm going to do something. Ooh, that's an idea. Is it bigger than that stone one we saw earlier? Or smaller? It's about the same size. Same size. It is technically a small creature. Oh, okay. Uh, seeing Andreas put the um, blindfold himself, uh, can I do some kind of knowledge check? Uh, yeah, you can do a knowledge nature check. Okay. It's a 12. It's better. It's not good. Yep. You don't really know if he is correct or not about how this thing turns things to stone. Okay. Uh, Zankath is going to, while looking away, try and point her bow in that general direction and keep the thing that, like in her peripheral vision. Okay. Yes, and I'm going to try to ice it with icicles. Okay. So far, it is staying around this collar that Andreas has thrown on the ground and just squawking at him. So you're saying we can shoot at it. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to... Okay, so you want to start combat? Yes. Great. Let's do that. Andreas got a 14. Do I get to do a surprise round? There's no surprise rounds in Pathfinder 2E. Zankath got a 27. What's it called? Sounded like the cockatrice was passing its turn when it was sniffing at the collar, though. Yeah, because I'm Jonesy specifically taking an action before we've gone into initiative. Do it. I wasn't doing anything either, so if it bypassed me and went down to Jonesy, that makes sense. Like, I was just waiting. I wish there were a clear mechanic for this like I might say something like well if you're trying to stealthily cast a spell before it can notice you're doing that then maybe you roll stealth for initiative or something like that there's no clear surprise mechanic yeah I mean the the danger with saying that is if I were if if I were to just say okay well the bad guys cast a spell on you before you started combat so do I get the equivalent of a surprise round it's like you're trying to sneak in a surprise round without there being an official surprise round you know what I mean it only benefits the players Mike sorry (laughs) <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, in that case... I do kind of see what you mean, because Jonesy's going to start casting a spell, and that causes everybody to roll initiative, and the cockatrice is faster. Right. All right, I am okay with this decision. I, I, I guess my objection is that if you want to play things that way and create a de facto surprise round, then I will too. No, I don't want to complicate things. Oh, my initiative tracker is out of date. It doesn't have anything for Jonesy or Corgo. 15. 15. And what did Jonesy get? 28. Okay, Jonesy then. Jonesy, you're going to go first as you begin casting this spell. What are you casting? I'm going to cast Purifying Icicles. Ooh. Jonesy's going to yell, Sir, that's not a pinata. Just <laughs> put on a blindfold. I don't like that. Do you get it? Touche. Hero point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was a little bit worried. I didn't get a single laugh for a second. <laughs> 12. 12 is a miss. Your icicles go shooting past the creature as it ducks out of the way, and it hisses at you, looks in your direction. You don't turn to stone. That means it is Zancath's turn. Okay, Sean. I see that an, an option is avert gaze. Yes. Like, that is one of the things that I can do. Right. That gives a plus two circumstance bonus against visual abilities. Will that, I assume that will affect my attack. It doesn't specify it, but seems logical. I mean, I guess it. the idea is that it uses up an action. So right, like there's, yeah. So there's, there's that penalty, okay. is that you're spending time to do it. There's no other effect. No you other effect. Yeah, action. so it's just you're okay. spending action I'm spending time. spending an action. That's nice. This thing turns creatures to stone. I'm not sure how, but it might be a, a look, so be careful. Uh, and I will use an action to avert my gaze. I will activate my point blank stance. Hey, hey, I did it on the first try. Nice. And then I'm going to shoot it. That's a 21 to hit. 21 is a hit. And that is eight damage. Eight points of damage. Your arrow sails through the air and thuds into the side of the creature, which squawks loudly at you. And I've used all my actions. The creature gets to go, and it first strides. 5, 10, 15, 20. Strides up to Andreas. And now does pretty much the only thing it can do it makes a beak attack on poor Andreas oof 21 to hit uh, that is a hit alright you take oh well, max damage uh, 6 points of damage from the beak oh. and you need to make a fairly important fortitude save ooh okay not what I expected 22. Yes. You succeed. So for a moment, you feel yourself slowing down and stiffening up, but you fight it off, and it doesn't affect you. Is this something that the rest of us can peg as being the way it turns things to stone? He can easily tell you. Okay. And I've got one action left. You can't do much with an acrobatics check, can you? Uh, He could tumble through. Yeah, uh, he doesn't want to tumble through. He wants to take care of you first. Oh, come on. Uh, okay, well, in that case, I'll just take a second attack. You could drop prone. <laughs> I like that idea. Well, that sounds like a great idea. Let him fake all of you out. You wouldn't expect that. <laughs> Never see it coming. But a 16 is a miss. Uh, yeah, 16 is a miss. So on its next beak attack, it snaps at you, but you nimbly jump back. Even though you've got your blindfold on, you sense it coming. Desna's guiding me in the darkness. So now it's Corgo and Hrungara's turn. Corgo will tell Hrungara to stay. Doesn't know that the biting does anything. He's 50 feet away, so that's going to be two actions just to get up there, and he'll pick up his... He threw a spear at the ground last time, so I'll pick that up along the way. So that's three actions for Corgo. Okay. I think you can get one more square, Corgo, if you want. But I understand. I understand why you might not be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And now, Andreas, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like I'm better game the heck out of this. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Andreas <laughs> is going to take a step back and cast magic weapon on his meteor hammer. So, uh, yeah, it just begins to glow with a uh, purple and pink intense energy. And he uh, begins to wave it back and forth. And he's like, you can't get me, you big chicken. I'm immune to your petrifying bite. Even with my blindfold on. (laughs) Jonesy, it's your turn. Uh, Divine Lance. Attack. 14. So your Divine Lance strikes out at it, but again, it seems to duck out of the way. (sighs) 
Once again, it misses. Okay. I will then cast Guidance on Andreas. Ooh. Okay. So you get a plus one stat bonus to an attack roll, perception check, saving throw, or skill check. Ooh, my next attack is going to be dope. Zankath. I am going to uh, move to get in a better angle. I'm going to move uh, so I'm kind of across this empty drop. Open cavernous space, yeah, right. And, and just have a better angle on it. I'm going to shoot it with a 24 to hit. That is a solid hit. That's five damage. Well, it included the plus two this time. That's hey. a painful three. <laughs> <laughs> And I have one more action. I'm just going to go for a second hit. We'll see if it, it, anything comes of it. I'm going to shoot it again. Oh. Okay. Ooh. That's a 28, but it did not take into effect my multiple attack penalty, so that's a 23 to oh. hit. Still a hit. But nice. not a nice. critical, sadly. Not a critical hit. That's another three damage. All right. Chipping away. Nice. That round was sad for me. Hey, you hit twice and did six damage. Okay. Nobody's complaining. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. true. You have nothing to be ashamed of. That was that was great. Badly injured works for you. <laughs> well, that's how I spend most of my time, so you got to get used to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The cockatrice is going to step up this time to Corgo. Try something different and try biting him instead. So here we go. It snaps out at Corgo. 24. That hits. This is a fortitude save. Fortitude save. And you take one point of damage. Ow! <laughs> and a 19 is a save. Very nice. So you again, just like Andreas, you feel yourself slowing down, but you shake it off and you are able to keep going. Second attack at a penalty. 21. That hits too. Uh, I don't see anything in here about do you can become resistant after you pass a, a get a successful save. Then you don't. Some effects have that, but I don't see anything here about that. So uh, I need you to make another saving throw. Uh-oh. I rolled a 13. This time you fail. You take six points of damage. I, can I use my hero point? You can. This is a good time to use that hero can point. I use my hero point? I don't want to turn to stone. Survive! Nope, 10. Ooh. Well, can we give him our hero Ooh. points? You could. You can take my hero point. But do I turn to stone, or do I just turn a little bit into stone? I think you turn into you stone. You don't know. Don't know. You gotta save your hero points for yourselves. Yeah, we're hiding in the back right now. I feel like it's fair for us to be yeah. giving our hero points to you guys. I mean, I'm kind of on Josh's side, but only because once you spent one hero point on a roll, you're not supposed to be allowed to spend another. Uh, well, there you oh, go. Yeah, okay. yeah that's true. Gosh, yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Always about those rules. I just want to see Josh's backup character. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. All right, what what happens for the moment? Corgo is slowed one. Okay. For now, that's all that happens. Okay. For now. What does that do? Do I get one less action? Right. That's correct. Nice. <laughs> You're taking this very well. All right. It was a, it was a lot better than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Corgo is feeling sleepy. Wouldn't it be cool if I just became a statue would be a handsome statue is it is it cork oh it is corgo's turn okay he'll try to stab it <laughs> ah, okay. mark that. 20 to hit <laughs> 20 is a hit ah seven damage ouch it doesn't seem like looking at it matters or not he'll attack again and then he'll set up a to help uh andreas on his attack Ooh, that's a Natural 20 on the second attack. Oh, yeah. no. Okay, yeah. yeah, that is a solid hit. Five on the roll, so that's 10 total. Wow. Minimum. So, Corgo, you really spear this thing hard, and it squawks loudly at you and looks badly hurt. It's in bad shape now. And the final attack's going to be he's setting up to help. He's going to try to attack it. You are out of actions. You're out of actions. You only have two. Oh, because well, I'm slowed. Oh, okay. Thanks. Sorry. Good call. Okay, that's it. Andreas. Uh, Andreas will spend an action to rip off the bandana from his eyes. Yeah. Stupid bandana smelled bad anyways. <laughs> Take this, you overgrown chicken. And he will do a spell strike. 
Meteor Hammer, and we'll do this one ice, because uh, he could feel the cold from Jonesy's purifying icicle and just, you know, smelled crisp. <laughs> but really, it's because he wanted to match me, I know. And he'll spend his guidance on this, so I have a plus 10 to this attack with Ooh. magic weapon. Nice. Oof. Oh. And I will hero point that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was a 12. Oh. I rolled a two on that, so I'm going to hero point. And that is, oh yeah, 22 for... Nice. Uh, cool. This is going to be doubled, so let's call that 32 plus six. That's Whoa. 38 points Whoa. damage. Nice. Wow. What? Jeez. Okay, so you murder this creature brutally. Tell me what happens to this poor innocent bird. Uh, so the meteor hammer uh, like frosts over and all these like big cold sp- ice ice spicle spices ice spicicles. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they're spikes and they're icicles uh, jut out from it and he like impales the creature on it and it just like flies back with all these rapidly melting icicles impaled in its body. Cool. Yeah, you kill this thing in one devastating blow. Yeah, it's it's dead. It is very dead. And that is the end of that encounter. <laughs> wow. I only got to slow Corgo, and that's all it accomplished. Very impressive, considering you just came from another fight. It's one of my better spells, I think. Go, go, wait. Uh, come here. Let me take a look at you. Can I just verify that he's not going to slowly become stone? Yeah. It bit me right here. <laughs> oh, no. Let me see. <laughs> I'm trying to read here about how long it lasts if you're just slowed. 24 hours. That's for the petrification. I don't know as if you're fully petrified. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true for just the slow condition. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you sure? Yes, I, I took a look here and you're he, he, uh, just a, a small wound and uh, you're, you're moving a little bit faster and... I'm sure you'll be fine. And then he'll look at Andreas and like make a like, oh no, he's dying face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, December 6, 2020, the devs have stated that it should be a minute to recover. It's an oversight in the stat block. Cool. Uh, all right. Thank you for looking that up. So a minute later, Corgo, you start to regain full speed in all your movements. It's a placebo effect because Jonesy lied to him. <laughs> Did you want to roll over that treat wounds check for Zankaf? Or was it yourself? It was yourself it was that you were myself. treating, right? Uh, but I will also try to reheal her if we have the time now. You don't see any other threats around. Just a two, 2d8, two right? Oh, that's bad. Uh, you crit, so you... You, you crit. So you, you get... double it. No, you do 4d8, and then if you spend a full hour, you double it. So I get 48, so I can add two more here. Mm-hmm. Which is good, because I only got two. Got 11. It's better. All right. And then we'll try to heal Sandcath here. 22. Ooh. There we go. Nice. Success. Nice. You get 15 back. Ooh. Jeez, that's great. That's a good roll. Gracias. All right. So while they're treating their injuries, Andreas, you're lo- it looks like you're looking around the camp. Yes, Andreas is, you know, he got interrupted in his attempt to find a spell book. He's very interested <laughs> in what this woman had uh, under her sleeves, up her sleeves, up her sleeves. And she, he's going to uh, investigate these tents. Okay. Upper sleeves would be a good gnome name. <sighs> yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. There are two tents here. One is neatly pegged to the ground with the tent flap pinned open. You can see a cot, blankets, a folding desk, and a chair inside. The other tent is soiled and looks crudely propped up with sticks and weighed down with rocks though it must be sturdy to stand up to the winds blowing across the mountains, and you can't see inside it. Then there's also this wolf statue here. It's huge. Mechanically huge? Let's say mechanically large. Okay, cool. Larger than a conventional wolf. Well, Andreas, uh, he's got one thing on his mind, and it is books. So he's going to look in uh, the writing desk, in and around the writing desk, under the mattress on the cot. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to search, uh, g- give me a perception check if you want to search the area thoroughly. Uh, Twelve. Well, you're definitely able to find some things. You find a book sitting on top of the desk, and this is a journal. You don't see any other books around, but you do find this journal. You also notice that there are two crates 
behind the easternmost tent, which is the rough-looking tent. Uh, okay. With a quick flip through, not seeing any arcane uh, information in it, no. Andreas will toss that Although into his... Although there might be useful information here in here to look for later. Yeah, yeah. he'll toss that into his bag. He's thinking she's probably not going to keep her stuff in the crate, so he's, he's going to like beeline it back over to the top of the cliff above where she dropped. Okay. And see if the, the dust has settled. The dust has settled. And you can see a trail down the side of the Aww. mountain where someone clearly tumbled for a bit, and then it just kind of stops. And you're not sure where she went. Ah. Guys, I'm so upset. Can, uh, Jonesy wants to look at this wolf statue and specifically see if its mouth is open and see if anything's stuffed in the mouth. Its mouth is slightly open, but there's nothing in its mouth aside from like teeth and a tongue. And a hero point. <laughs> Always check a wolf in the mouth. That's what my daddy used to say. Can I? I'm assuming this has been. Is this is like a petrified wolf? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to make a nature check, I, maybe you can tell you more. I do. I didn't do good though. Eleven. But unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> Zagath just wants to look around the stuff that. Andreas didn't pay any attention to. Just start, you know, <laughs> crates or whatever, go through the stuff. <laughs> okay. So you begin looking around inside the rough tent. You just peek inside. There's really not much of value in there. It looks like that must have belonged to the dwarves, and they didn't take good care of the place. But you do find some basic tools for butchering game. There's not much. I mean, it's nothing that the broken tusks don't already have plenty of. It's worth about 10 gold. You do, however, looking at the crates discover something incredibly valuable. They contain preserved food. Ooh. They are clearly labeled foodstuffs. And looking inside, you find what must be hundreds of portions of preserved food. Salted fish, sacks of flour, dried fruit, bottles of wine, and other foods that Corgo has never seen before. Like what? What's some food in here that is exciting for the player characters to discover. Not Joe's. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate? Ooh, okay, chocolate. there's chocolate. Figs. Figs. Ooh, oranges. Okay. Oh, they got oranges? What? Like oranges probably aren't in this area. Like marmalade or jams or something? No weird fantasy foods or fruit or anything? Tacos. <laughs> Tacos, yes. Weird fantasy <laughs> they, food. They grow on trees. Yes. It's wild. <laughs> Hot dogs. Ketchup. <laughs> Potato yes. wedges. Some really <laughs> spicy peppers. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff in here. You immediately recognize that this is incredibly valuable to the following because it allows the hunters and scouts to spend less time hunting and gathering, which moves the group more quickly. You may use these supplies to gain a bonus travel exploration activity. You can use the supplies for this three times, with each use only being good for one day. It can only be used for travel not for other activities, right? So you can't use it to speed up reconnoitering. But if at some point you needed to move quickly, you could get two travel actions in a day instead of just one. Cool. Wow. Yeah, well, that's cool. cool. That's pretty handy. Yeah, that's great. I'm going to make that into a comment on my uh, Google Doc or I will forget about it. Yeah. That's about all that you see here. Anything else that you want to do? Uh, Zaycath will call Corgo over. Uh, Corgo, dear, do you think you could have help me carry these crates down to the followings? Very good that we found them. There is a cart, actually. Oh, let's just use the cart. Oh, a cart. According to the map, there's a cart anyway. The following will be shot. What's, what is what is that? We finally get to teach these people about wheels. <laughs> <laughs> these weird round things. Why wouldn't you just slide it on the ground like we always have done? <laughs> I mean, that's a perfectly acceptable way to do it, but this is just a different way. The, the wheels spin and it makes it a little easier. Why? This method makes you less hungry in the long run. Okay, sounds stupid. Let's, we'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, but if we wait long enough, maybe this this large dog will become unpetrified and we can put it with, you know, tie it up against the cart and have it wheel it down for us, friends, maybe. Yeah, do they don't have any pack animals, hey? No. Hmm, interesting. Dwarf labor. Oh no, I'm glad you said it before I did that. <laughs> do you want to wait to see if the wolf wakes up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much so. All right. 
We, are we having a vote on this? All right, let's just sit here and wait then. <clears throat> so you wait. <laughs> uh, uh, what are we going to name it when it, when it wakes a, up? <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we checked, we checked all the tents really good, right? Yeah. You checked them to the best of your perception roll ability. Go, go. <laughs> you look in these tents. I didn't I get a perception distracted. check. I just, That's right. I just got told stuff. You just I you, you just looked around. Did, did you want to roll a perception check to find more? Yes. Always. Yeah, go ahead. It's 25. Wow. Nice. 25. Nice. Zancath, you look around a bit more. You confirm what Andrea said. Obviously, the tent on the left or to the west was uh, the obnoxious lady's tent, and the other tent was a dwarven tent. There is not much here of value. You find some indications that uh, you find some ink that has been spilled that suggests that maybe there may have been a spell book that was written in here at some point, but it is not here. Okay. There is no spell book in this tent. You also are sure that the wolf. Uh, was dragged here. It wasn't petrified here. Interesting. Hmm. While Jonesy waits for the wolf to wake up, I will read the journal. All right, so you have a look inside the journal. There are basically two things that you get from this journal. Number one, it has helpful exercises and reminders on how to hunt big game. And that will allow you, if you want, to access the game hunter archetype. Ooh. Mechanically. Uh, give me the cliff notes on big game hunter, or on game hunter. I have none. <laughs> It'll be in the in the player's guide. Okie dokie. Sorry. I'll look it up then. I'll do it. I'll do the work. That's fine. I don't do any work for this podcast. It's only fair. Oh my god, I'm so bored. Can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> this is your thing. You wanted to uh, wait. Yes, I thought it would be like ten minutes. This has been hours. <laughs> The second thing you find is a summary of Ardissa Prendergant's expedition so far. She traveled to the realm of the Mammoth Lords alone and then hired the dwarves as guides and porters. They found the Apaku, which, remember, is that stone that extends the range of spells, evocation spells. They found the Apaku up here and decided it would make a good location from which to ambush a Mammoth Lord following. Her plan was basically to bombard it with fireballs. And magic missiles. Rude. Yeah, that would have definitely given you a totally well-preserved mammoth. What uh-huh. an idiot woman. <laughs> I forgot to show you, by the way, the artwork for our Prendergant, and I should do that. So let me share that so we can all marvel at it. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Once again, oh, awesome. continuing the tradition of villains having some kind of weird proportions. Yep, there's some <laughs> strange things happening there, but okay. Mm-hmm. I like it. All right. Her legs are like three-fourths of her body. I like it a lot better than some of the Burning Mammoth art. But it, it, I still think it looks... A, I think it's a very stylized decision, compared at least to the Broken Tusks, who have much more naturalistic art. Yeah. But it is very stylish. Is she a human or she have uh, elf ears there? I think she was Talden, right? Yeah, she's a human. Okay. I like the big floppy hat. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's a, it's a choice when you're going game hunting. And the short bow she had hanging off of her boot? <laughs> that was a crossbow that was hanging from her side. Ah, looked like short bow boots. I know. Uh, I mean, if I show you again, it'll be clear what's going on. Uh, if, if you want, let's see here. Just DM me pictures little... of that wizard later, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a. I got something else I got to do, guys. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll back. see you later. <laughs> Should we track her down? Or, I mean, we'll never catch up to her with legs that long. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could use our game hunter archetype, which I just looked up. <laughs> you uh, you get the hunt prey action, normally only for rangers. Oh. Whoa. But you can only designate animals, beasts, and dragons as your prey, so it sucks. And then <laughs> if you hit the prey while it's flat-footed... Uh, you slow it down, and then as you grow older in levels and get more game hunter stuff, you get better at hunting prey. Cool. So like the predator. You you basically become the predator, but only for dragons, not for Arnold's. Oh, oh I see the crossbow now. Okay, cool. Oh, sure. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I like the boot version better. I'm going to draw a character now with, with shortbow boots. 
Don't hold me to that. <laughs> oh, I'll make you do it. It'd be like a cool monk thing. Like the monk like kicks and then like the part of the crossbow boat. Oh, cool. crossbow, crossbow shoots. <laughs> choo, choo. Oh, and then it could do the splits and then oh, shoot two different choo. directions at once. Uh, yeah. 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 We're talking. yeah. Oh, Jonesy falls off the cliff and dies. <laughs> and this new character shows up. <laughs> oh, backup character. <laughs> Okay, so you're waiting, and Andreas is reading. Jonesy, I'm hurt. While we wait, can you also heal me? And then we should probably just head back to the camp. Yes, I, I, think. I agree. I was, We've neutralized uh, I the was threat. excited, and it's, uh, it's quite boring to wait. I will heal you if I can. Me too. Me too. And I think we head back. I don't think there's anything else at this camp. I don't think there's anything else at the camp. Uh, sorry, no heal for Andreas. But a heal for Corgo, seven. And then Thanks. if we're willing to wait another hour. Yep, I'll assume you get back to camp and you can try again. Okay. Then if we get back to camp, okay. Oh, Jonesy's way too distracted. He's very hungry. You just hurt me. You <laughs> literally... Jonesy, stop poking me with those dang <laughs> needles. They just... Oh, you move around so much. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try again tomorrow. Because, yeah, there's nothing else here. So we go back to camp and, uh, and uh, or not to camp, to the following. And then mm-hmm. we spend the li- next six minutes of the podcast. Vamping. Yep. So Va- let, let's assume that you do some healing in the remaining time. I, I don't really think we need to uh, work all that out on air. The next thing I want to do is actually recap some events for you since we're about to do some stuff that requires that you remember stuff that has happened so far and really i'm doing this for the listeners because i'm sure all of you remember all this uh-huh yep right so it's not for you via my extensive notes that's right so here we go let's recap some of the events so far before the green moon ceremony grandfather Ewa explained that prior to the opening of the world wound the burning mammoths were a powerful following charged with the care of the primordial flame a gift from sister cinder Some of the following hid the primordial flame to keep it safe, both from the demons from the world wound and from those members of the following who wanted to take it east to help in the fight against those demons. Those who stayed away from the crusades at the world wound became the Broken Tusk following. At the Green Moon Ceremony, the Burning Mammoths attacked the Broken Tusks and Ewa's grandson, Pekano, fled the site. The stress of the attack and the following's escape were too much for the elderly grandfather Ewa. On his deathbed, he revealed more important information. His mother, Sidka, and the other Broken Tusks took their primordial flame to Red Cat Cave, the location of which you have recently confirmed, here in the mountains. The flame was placed in the care of Siarstik, a noble and magical cat, and the following checked on it every year on its annual migration. After just a few years, however, Sidka and the Broken Tusks returned to find the flame was gone and the cat's enraged spirit haunted the cave. They never returned. Ewa charged you with returning to the cave and somehow convincing the angry spirit to tell you what it remembers about the theft. If possible, you are to track down the primordial flame and perhaps even reunite the people. That was his final wish. You and the Broken Tusk following have reached the Tusk Mountains. The cave is just a few days away. That evening... On the 5th of Desna, as you set up camp, Zankath spots three figures walking up the hill toward you from the direction of the following. It's Letsua, Argakoa, and Shaggy Shemvin. Shaggy is carrying a large boulder as though it weighed very little. Just to remind you and the listeners, Letsu- Letsua and Argakoa are mammoth lords, that is, they're leaders of the following, and Argakoa is the Otter House leader and the following song singer. The elf and the human are also a couple. Shaggy strolls up, carrying this large, heavy rock, and he looks extremely happy with himself. Hello, friends. These nice people asked me to escort them to you, and I said I would do that. I thought maybe you might have seen some more ravens, or maybe even the raven-headed woman. So, have you? i I'm afraid. I, I'm a- afraid we have not, Shaggy. Uh, mostly we've just seen some people and not a lot of wildlife at all, actually. His expression falls a bit. Aww. Oh, that's too bad. But 
I'm still happy to see you. What do you think of my big rock? I, it's I really excellent. like it's it. It's speechless. You're speechless. It's so cool. It's so big. Yes, it's a very <laughs> impressive rock. It's very big. I thought it would look nice on top of the hill. Oh, most certainly. In fact, even up there, we found another cool rock. Oh, really? Yes, it's... You mean up the mountain? Yes, uh, when we were up there, we ran into a wizard who had uh, found a magical rock called an apaku. Oh. Oh, I've heard of those. Oh, really? We've been here a long time. Yes, it was quite interesting. I found it uh, had the ability to magnify magical powers. Uh, Did you, uh... Shaggy, do you know where there are other abaku around here? I've heard there are some more to the east, on the other side of the mountains. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to try and track more of these down. Uh, Perhaps they have other and more interesting abilities. Yeah, I like big rocks. Reasonable. I like to move them. I love Shaggy so much. And at that point, Letsua steps in. Yes, yes, thank you very much, Shaggy. You've proven yourself invaluable. Scouts, we've come to you to get an update. Thank you very much for the supplies. They'll prove invaluable. We'll make great use of them. Uh, at your direction, of course, because you'll be telling us what we need to do and when. Uh, we must decide what to do next. To the north lie the plains between the mountains. If we continue in that direction, we'll be following the Siorn route, our traditional path since we became the Broken Tusks. We understand that you are going to Red Cat Cave. The question is, what should the following do? Should we plan to follow you in that direction? Should we continue further north? We have quite a lead on the burning mammoths now. And perhaps I should show you the map. And Argakoa breaks in at that point. And she says, It's not impossible, though, for their fastest scouts to have gotten ahead of us, or even climbed into the mountains. We need to be careful. We can tarry for a few days, but no longer. Worst of all, the Burning Mammoths surely know our route. I'm not sure fleeing north will do much more than postpone the inevitable. Is there anything, aside from the difficulty of traveling through the mountains, that would stop you, uh, the following, from coming with us to Red Cat Cave? No, no, there's no reason why we couldn't do that, except that, as you can see on your maps there... If they do that, they will, and then you decide to head back north on the traditional route, they will then have to back up the way they came. Oh, so they're going straight north from where we are now. That would be the normal thing that you and the following would do. Yes. The only question is whether there's any possibility that if you go to Red Cat Cave, you'll want to go a different direction, do something else entirely. Do you want the following to follow you? Remember that those tannish hexes are hills and they take longer to move through so for listeners at home we're right now like kind of sandwiched between mountains on our east and on our west to the north are three like plains hexes between the mountains that just go straight off the top of the map and if we were to go north one hex we could then go east into hills between more mountains and those hills continue all the way to the east off the map so I guess my impression was that the Siorn route might continue to the east around around that horn of the mountain range. But you're saying they go they go north. They normally go north, that's right. And then eventually west and wrap back around again. And then Red Cat Cave is two hexes to the east of us in the mountains, like it, like right in the middle of some mountains. That's right. And to get around to it, you you'll need to go one hex north. Either around five days worth of hexes or through yeah. the mountains, four days, six days worth of hexes. Yeah. What's our current lead on? Eight days. It would take us eight days to go around or six days to go through the mountains. No, no not our, what's our current lead on uh, the burning mammoths? At least 15 days. Uh, you are weeks ahead of them at this point. Okay. So what you need to decide is where you want the following to go. Mm-hmm. Are they following you to the entrance of Red Cat Cave? Are they stopping a bit behind you? Are they continuing a little bit along the Seahorn route and then waiting for you? If you continue straight to Red Cat Cave without reconnoitering, assuming you go on the regular path, uh, the, the re- avoiding the mountains, yeah, it's, it's six days of traveling. And during that time, the Burning Mammoths will move twice. That still puts them almost three weeks behind you. 
right? You have a big lead on them. And that's not even assuming you use those supplies that you found. Right. Yeah. Let's just, let's bring them all to Red Cat Cave. And if they somehow manage to catch up, then we can use those supplies to get away. Yes, I don't like the idea of leaving the following. Yes, if they if we were going to try to travel without them, what would we tell them? Go north the two days and then wait another 14. And if we don't catch up to you, go on by yourselves. Like, we're in this together. What if we brought them part of the way? Bring them to the, the valley between the north and south mountains. They wait there. We go on. They don't have to do the hard travel through the hills. And if they, then they still have the option of moving to the east, if necessary, or continuing to the north. My concern is we're still telling them to travel into land that is unscouted. Yes, they're, they're helpless. They're like basically children without us. <laughs> we'll birth their babies. Let's do an Argacoa look at each other. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, no offense, of course. Well, what I'm saying is we travel with them. We go to the, go to the north and then uh, to the east. And they wait there, and we continue on. They wait for us there. And once we've discovered whatever we discover, we return. I think it's just a matter of time. If we go even one hex north of them, getting to Red Cat is now a 10-day trip for us instead of a six-day trip. You're wanting us to go straight through the mountains, not around the mountains. I was just assuming we were going around the mountains. Yeah, we are, oh, Sean, you're thinking going straight through the mountains? Uh, so sick, it would take, if we go through the mountains, for the four of us, it would take us six days to get to Red Cat Cave, because it's three travel moves to get through mountains for us. Okay. That's without any reconnoitering. If we go north and around, it's one, two, eight. without reconnoitering, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, eight. Okay. So, yes, through is fast. So, we've got a three-week lead. Right. But now, yeah, and that's without reconnoitering. So if we're reconnoitering to make sure the following doesn't encounter yeah. something, add, you know, you double each of those days. If we're reconnoitering the mountains, it's still three. Is it still three travel actions to reconnoiter? The following can't go yeah, through the mountains. I totally would. can't. Just oh, to be clear. I okay. to go through the yeah. mountains anyway. Yeah, the follow. I assume that you were just talking about just you going through the mountains. I'm sorry. Yeah, the following cannot move through the mountains. Okay. So then, yeah. Unfortunately, they... They are not as advanced as Hannibal, I guess, <laughs> and can't get those those mammoths up there. That's a deep history cut, man. Jeez. I mean, we could just leave them here. This is the the decision point. Do we make them move on by themselves, or do we go with them to keep make sure that they're safe, and then backtrack, basically? Uh, well, I guess Letsu and Argokoa will let you know that, of course, the following's preference, if they had to choose, is to stick with you. Oh. That is, if you're going to Red Cat Cave, they have a preference to follow you there so that you can continue scouting for them no matter which direction they end up going. But if you want them to go somewhere else, they can. Do we have any knowledge of what is to the east, like off the map here? Does it lead to, like, is it just a dead end if we, you know, end up having to go that way? Are we just trapping ourselves or? Yeah, good like, question. They, they don't have a, a strong sense of what's over there there are paths in that direction it's not a dead end okay. but they don't know that path very well yeah. i vote to, for us to reconnoiter as usual and bring them along we'll still be moving faster than the burning mammoth so we'll still have a lead on them even though it will take us more time to get to the cave i i vote to send them north one hex one day's travel and we go through the mountains but if everyone else disagrees, I understand and will go by your decision. What does Jonesy think? I don't want to leave them. Look at them. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three That's three on one. Arakoa and Letsua squirm uncomfortably. <laughs> <laughs> so you decide that you're all going to stick together. If you're doing that, that means that on the 6th, you move north one into the plains... And then that same day, the burning mammoths move. What if we, instead of taking them the whole way, I still think we should just leave them somewhere close and travel on, but I guess they want to come with us. Whatever, it's fine. The next day, you have a reconnoiter activity, and we'll cut a lot of this out. And on the 8th... Uh And 
And finally, on the 13th of Desna, after you're finished scouting out the area, you reach the cave at the foot of the mountains. So the following is in the hills to your north, and you have now reached the cave. Thanks to the previous information you've collected, including the map from Harbin of Farwander, you have no trouble finding the entrance to Red Cat Cave. Two upthrust pinnacles of red rock, like long fangs, frame a narrow cave opening. A protruding overhang with a notch in its center enhances the entrance's resemblance to the maw of a great stone cat. You approach the opening and note that the ground beneath the rocky overhang is sheltered and dry. Just to the right of the cave entrance is an old stone fire ring where someone had made camp. On the rock wall just above and beside the fire ring, the faded outline of a painted saber-toothed tiger looks poised to pounce. This would make a good place to camp. And we do. <laughs> That's a heck of a hint. <laughs> we'll find out if they camp in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as at the House of Bob, or by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash the House of Bob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one shots, episode commentary and other stuff for supporting the podcast. Art for this episode is by Sean Makes. Audio production and music are by Mike Hammock. Thanks again for listening, and roll on. Last time on Broken Dusk Rising. No, I'm not going to do that. Do that it. Be, I like that. I would, no, it would <laughs> tear my voice up. Oh, no, I sound like you, don't I? No, this is my voice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Stop, you're confusing me. That's, the, that's like when we started TFT GGW, and I think Andy asked, can we do called shots? Can I shoot him in the head? And I said, well, if you want to do that, we can do that, but then my guys are all going to go to try to shoot you in the head, too. And they said, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Symmetry is the worst. <laughs> Hold on. My text here, I just realized I made an edit, and now it makes no sense. <laughs> Take your time. Make us sound cool. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Take Friend right. out. We did everything awesome. No, we right. can't lose Friend. Friend was Fan a favorite already. <laughs> He's not even that strong. Uh, we can assume that sometime during that several days of travel, we were healed up to full, right? Oh, yeah, you're all healed up. Cool. Yep, for sure. I want to get all healed up, all spells refilled, all that good stuff. And we're level three? Whoa. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Was that Phoebe Judge? Yeah, that was so yeah, good. That, that <laughs> wow. Your voice is so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That's very professional. You should just read all our yeah, stuff like you, that you from now on. Yeah, you can do mine. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>